So I wanted to talk to you today about three things. Number one, uh, slips. Number two, skids. And number three, spins. The short of it is, slips are a good thing, so, um, skids are a bad thing, and spins, as you are well aware, are a very bad thing. And so we're going to talk about all three. So the good one, the slips, have a couple of useful purposes. And there's two types of slips you should be learning about. You've got your side slip and you've got your forward slip. Your side slip is used to deal with crosswinds when you're coming in for a landing. And basically what would happen if, if you're looking straight on at the nose of this plane and it's coming in for a landing and you've got a crosswind coming from the right, you dip the wing into the wind and then you put a little left rudder in such that you maintain longitudinal, line, longitudinal access with the runway um, and maintain um, the center line with the runway. And as you come in and slow down, your upwind wheel will touch first and your downwind wheel will touch second. As you slow down and lose aileron authority, you'll continue to increase additional aileron control to the right to make sure that you stay over the runway or and roll um, along the center of the runway until you get the control plane under control and, and brake to a stop. So that's the usefulness of a side slip. The next type of uh, slip is the forward slip. The forward slip is used to reduce or um, drop a lot of altitude. And it's very similar to the side slip, typically, what you're, but it's more um, robust in the sense that you might put in harder right aileron and more left rudder, possibly full left rudder in this case, and hard right rudder. So as the planes in this, this configuration with the wing dip significantly into the wind and left rudder like this, relative to the wind, this down wing has a lot of clean air flowing over. The upward wing has got dirty air blowing over because relative to the wind, it's hitting the cowling and blowing up over the cowling and onto the swing. So this wing is more likely to stall if you get too slow and have too high an angle of attack. But if it does stall, that wing is going to drop, the nose is going to come down, and you'll, it'll begin to fly again because the wing will dropped its angle attack and you'll have no serious concerns. Um, the, why the reason you lose the altitude is you, when you put the aircraft in this position, relative to the wind, you've got all this drag blowing along this side of the aircraft. And that extra drag with the lift that you do have allows you to descend at a much uh, faster rate and lose the altitude. So that's the advantage of the slips, both side slip and forward slip. The next topic are skids. Skids are bad. And basically, if you get into a skid condition, you're very possibly setting yourself up for a stall spin. Typically, a skid is done when somebody's turning base to final, particularly if they've overshot the runway. And when they turn that base to final, instead of being coordinated and putting more left aileron in and left rudder, such they maintain center ball on the uh, turn slip indicator, what they wind up doing is uh, putting more rudder in, left rudder, in yawing the plane along its vertical axis. And when they do that, the air gets accelerated over this side and deaccelerated over this side. The acceleration causes the wing to go up. Again, the dirty air is hitting this low wing um, because of the turn. And this low wing, if the angle of attack is high enough, will cause that wing to stall. And when it does, that wing will go down, roll the aircraft to roll over, and you'll be in a stall spin situation. And when you're less than a thousand feet above the ground, you're not going to recover for it. It's going to be a bad day. So the trick is, number one, try to avoid overshooting the runway. Number two, if you are going to overshoot, consider doing a go around. That's your best um, ticket. But if you decide you are going to try to make that turn and recover from it, make sure you maintain coordination. If you're going to dip, put left rudder in, you're also putting left aileron in so that you maintain um, a, a controlled, coordinated flight um, as you recover back toward the center of the runway. If you don't, um, you'll find yourself into that stall spin configuration. Last thing I want to talk about are spins. Again, to get a spin, you need to have um, a high angle of attack, basically exceeding the angle of attack, and you need to have a yawing motion in the vertical axis. And so, again, in that situation where you're base to final and you're, you're getting, you got slow, you've pitched up, you've... Um, <clears throat> you've decided to yaw the plane versus have a coordinated control, you are set yourself up to be low airspeed, high angle of attack with a yawing motion that will cause the spin, the stall, and then the spin. At higher altitudes, if you get yourself in a spin, it's fairly easy to recover. 
There's an acronym called PAIR, P-A-R-E. Immediately reduce the power to idle if you see yourself get into a, a stall spin. Neutralize the ailerons. Apply opposite rudder to the spin and push the yoke or, or, or stick or elevator forward to break the angle of the tack. Maintain that position until the spin stops and then reduce the pressures to roll out of um, the bank and in the opposite row that you had in. Apply power and slowly start to pull yourself back up. Don't want, don't want to get yourself into a secondary stall and recover in altitude and airspeed. And that's what you do to deal with a spin. But again, a spin less than a thousand feet above the ground, your chances of recovering from it are slim to none. Anyways, hopefully that uh, provided some useful information for you. If it did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you get notified on my next video.